ES Audio. What's up, guys? I'm John Weeks, and this is the Evening Standards Tech and Science Daily. Coming up, NASA Flix, a new streaming platform from the US Space Agency. But first, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has announced hundreds of new licenses to drill for oil and gas will be granted across the UK, despite the continuing warnings about global warming. We know scientifically it doesn't make any sense. Scientifically, we can't do it. We don't have the carbon budget to do any more new oil and gas going into the future if we do want to you know, preserve the planet. And we know that doing renewables is probably the biggest social and economic opportunity as well as environmental opportunity that the UK and most of the world has had in the 21st century. That's the reaction of Fraser Stewart from Regen, an independent not-for-profit centre of energy expertise. He said despite the government's claims that the plans could support 50,000 jobs, boost our energy security and provide more affordable energy to British homes, none of that will come anytime soon. So from oil and gas licences being granted to actually any production and happening can take several decades. In some cases, we're looking at about 25 to 30 years, which I'm sure most people listening will understand that's not going to do an awful lot for energy security or for your bills or for the planet uh, today or anytime soon. Fraser also said at the moment, the vast majority of oil and gas produced in the UK is actually exported to other countries. He told us it's frustrating because the science shows that renewables would actually power UK homes and businesses and in a much quicker time frame. If we compare that to new onshore wind, offshore wind, which does take a little bit longer because it's so massive and solar, you can get those connections in an ideal world in a few years. A big problem that we have just now is that the national grid is a little bit old and a little bit creaky. So we need to upgrade the grid so that we can get these new renewable technologies online as soon as possible. Good news for stargazers. We're expecting to see two supermoons next month, starting tomorrow, Tuesday the 1st of August. The moon will reach its closest point to Earth on Tuesday nights, making it look up to 14% bigger and 30% brighter compared with when it's furthest away. The second supermoon will come at the end of the month on the 30th of August, and that's known as a super rare blue moon, as it's the second in 30 days. That won't happen again until 2037. And if the skies are clear on both evenings, it's thought people using binoculars or telescopes may even be able to see features like Luna Maria, the dark plains formed by ancient volcanic lava flows, as well as rays emanating from lunar craters. NASA is preparing for its latest launch. Nope, not a rocket. A streaming service showing live space missions. It's called NASA Plus, it'll be free, and will give you as inside footage of future missions, including Artemis, the big one sending people to the moon again, due to launch in 2028. The platform will also feature original series and a handful of new shows based on things like exoplanet research, climate change, and the influence of the sun on our planet. There's yet another warning about the promotion of vapes to children following research by Imperial College London. Researchers found that children are being increasingly exposed to e-cigarettes on display in shops, with 66% of children reporting seeing vape sticks in supermarkets, compared with 57% in 2018. They said there needs to be better enforcement of existing laws on the display of tobacco, as well as action to put vapes out of sight and reach of children. Study co-author Professor Nicholas Hopkinson said that in 2021, the UK government rejected amendments to the Health and Social Care Bill, which would have given it power to control types of e-cigarette marketing that promote youth uptake. And since then, youth vaping has increased dramatically. After almost eight months, Kanye West has been allowed back onto Twitter. Sorry, I mean X. The rapper, who now goes by the name Ye, was suspended for violating the platform's policy against inciting violence after posting a series of erratic tweets at the end of last year, including one which appeared to show a symbol combining a swastika and a Jewish star. He faced backlash over his comments and was dropped by Adidas talent agency CAA and the Balenciaga Fashion House. Since his reinstatement, and at the time of recording this podcast, he's not yet posted on the platform. Coming up, how GPS could predict earthquakes two hours ahead, 
And what do Mars and a small Scottish island have in common? Why not hit follow and give us a rating during the break? Welcome back. The European Space Agency's mission to return a dying satellite to Earth safely has been a success. ESA performed a first-of-its-kind re-entry manoeuvre with the Aeolus satellite to ensure any surviving parts fell into the Atlantic Ocean after travelling through the atmosphere. As we told you last week, the space agency used what little fuel remained on board to steer Aeolus back to Earth. The satellite was built in the UK and is the first to acquire profiles of Earth's wind on a global scale to help us produce more accurate weather forecasts. It's thought GPS could be used to detect earthquakes two hours before they happen, but the technology does need to be developed further first. Data gathered using GPS recently revealed that a slow and otherwise undetectable slip of tectonic plates usually begins two hours before an earthquake of magnitude 7 and above. Experts behind the study said that what they found suggests with denser and higher precision instruments, it could be possible to monitor for this precursor phase and detect earthquakes before they happen. And finally, it turns out Mars and a small Scottish island have something in common. They're rocks. Scientists preparing to examine rocks from Mars have collected samples from the island, called rum, because they have a similar mineral and chemical makeup to those on the red planet. In 2033, samples from Mars are due to be brought to Earth. The scientists want to understand how best to examine them before they arrive to give them a head start. You're up to date. Come back at four o'clock and search for The Leader Podcast. We're back tomorrow afternoon at one o'clock. See you then.